Over my shoulder is the Hyundai RN22e. This is a prototype that gives us a very close look at an almost finished version of Hyundai's Ionic 5N electric hot hatch and also the forthcoming Ionic 6N sports sedan. Chasing cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct we've brought it here to The Bend in South Australia, one of Australia's biggest, fastest, and most taxing tracks for any car to see whether this EV is up to the challenge because Hyundai says that the RN22e is deserving of the N badge and the forthcoming Ionic 5 and 6 N cars will be true N vehicles. That means they'll be able to stand up to punishment on track. Today, we'll be testing that claim on one of the toughest tracks here in Australia. Hyundai claims that its N EVs will be much more serious on track than the Kia EV6, which is more of a GT car these vehicles are truly track bred. So does that ring true? We're gonna find out. The first thing we'll do is take the RN22e for a spirited track drive, and then I'll show you around the car, explain a little bit more about the hardware and the interior, and what we should expect from Hyundai's forthcoming production N cars. But before we get started, hit subscribe. Although the RN22e gives us our best look yet at what the forthcoming Hyundai Ioniq 6N and Ioniq 5N are going to be like to drive, it's important to remember that this is technically one of Hyundai's rolling lab prototypes. It's completely set up in here for track development work. And that's why in the cabin, you're gonna see a whole bunch of components that won't make it to the production car, including a full cage in here and these extremely aggressive racing bucket seats and say belt harnesses. Pretty unlikely that they'll make the production version of this car, but we can get a few clues about how Hyundai will change the interior of its Ionic 5 and Ionic 6 to meet the demands of end customers. And a few of those ways are significant use of Alcantara or suede-like materials. I think it's pretty likely we'll see those carry across to frame this center console here. But also a really nice touch that I love is the use of kind of a gray blue material as a secondary trim up here on the dashboard. I think it's pretty likely Hyundai will do that for the Ionic 5N and the Ionic 6N. But otherwise, just as you'd expect, most of the components are straight from the production cars, including the dual 12.3 inch touchscreens, which both have the normal infotainment system from a modern Hyundai, a bunch of hard buttons for your infotainment, climate control down here, a direction shifter, not a gear shifter, normal stalks, and however, you do get nice metal paddles and hopefully they stay for the production car too because they really give you a nice bit of tactility behind the steering wheel, which won't be this racing wheel. It'll be a normal one. Okay, so first of all, let's drive this thingy. In a couple of minutes, we'll talk about some of the hardware and the aesthetics of this car and what we can expect to come to production. But for now, I just want to explain how it feels because this is such an important moment for Hyundai N. They've built up credibility and a reputation for building some great affordable front wheel drive hot hatches. But how is it going to extend to premium rear biased fully electric sports sedans like the RN22e which foreshadows the Ionic 6N but also almost all of the technology that we're going to see on the Ionic 5N next year. Well for a first stab at a car like this the uh, RN22e is pretty darn convincing. It sort of mirrors the i30N in that way which saw Hyundai come to hot hatch territory and almost nail it out of the gate. I mean, who does that? Now, the division is coming to electric sports sedans, taking on the likes of the Tesla Model 3 Performance. And my oh my, uh, they are not doing it by halves. Uh, they're coming to the table with some serious hardware, heavily, heavily modified version of the Ionic 5's rear motor, silicon carbide double inverter here, and a very fast motor, which means a 260 kilometer per hour top speed. We're heading down the straight here at the bend right now. There's 200 kilometers per hour. There's 210 and we're still climbing. And now we've got to break into turn one at 220 kilometers per hour. And we also have an opportunity to try one of the party pieces of the RN22e, which is its simulated DCT gearbox, which is linked to the paddles and is designed to give you the impression of Hyundai's DCT. And it simulates 
upshifts at up to 8,000 RPM in an internal combustion vehicle. And the tuning of this system has come a long way from the last time I drove the car a few months ago. It now feels more natural. There's not a huge amount of purpose to the system because it's not doing anything. It's completely artificial. The motor turns it up to 21,000 RPM in this car. The paddles aren't doing anything about that, but it kind of simulates, you know, what life is like in a combustion sports sedan, I guess. I think some people will really like this technology. Albert Bierman says it's great on a back road. Certainly here on track, it makes it feel like I've got more to do, and that's kind of half the fun. Downshift. Downshift. It sounds cool too. Speaking of sound, we've got three selectable sounds in this car. We're only being shown one of them today, but it sounds different to what I drove at Bilsterberg. And I like it. Here we go, another straight run with the simulated gear shifts. What else can I tell you about the RN22E and the way it gets the job done? Well, the steering is fantastic. I'm hoping that most of this steering feel translates to the production version of the Ionic 5N and the Ionic 6N if that vehicle gets confirmed because it feels positive, it feels meaty, it feels better than any other EV apart from the Porsche Taycan for me at this point in time. But one massive trick up the sleeve of the RN22e is that it has a twin clutch real-time torque vectoring rear differential. Now this won't be fitted to the Ionic 5N at launch, which is a shame because it gets the job done so well. You have so much precision on throttle, you can really place this car incredibly easily on track. At launch, the Ionic 5N will run with an ELSD, just like the Kia EV6 GT, but we think this feature will launch on the Ionic 6N and that it will come to the Ionic 5N at that car's midlife facelift, and I have a feeling it might be worth waiting for. Now, it feels lighter than it is, it's 2,000 kilos, and yet there's a really good degree of adjustability to the chassis. It doesn't feel lightweight, it doesn't feel like a front wheel drive hot hatch, it feels like a big bruising rear biased sports sedan that's incredibly quick and just feels more interesting in almost every way to drive than virtually any other EV on the market and that's exactly what Hyundai N is trying to achieve. So that's our second look at the Hyundai RN22e. The first one was over in Germany on a tight and sinewy little mountain circuit at Bilsterberg. The second experience today here at the Bend has showed us much more about what Hyundai will be doing with its electric N cars and how it will make them capable of track driving. Now we're gonna see the Ionic 5N next year. That car doesn't look like the RN22e, but it will use almost all of its mechanical bits. And then later, probably in 2024, Hyundai will show us the Ionic 6N. It's mid-sized sports sedan competitor to the Tesla Model 3 performance. So lots of exciting stuff on the horizon for Hyundai as it now transitions its N brand from popping petrol cars through to fully electric superstars. So keen to hear your views on that. Let me know down below this video in the comments. Would you consider a Hyundai NEV? While you're there, hit subscribe and the notification bell if you haven't already. Make sure you never miss our uploads. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.